XEQ is an open and transparent sounding parametric EQ that provides the user with a truly comprehensive range of EQ tools within an intuitive user interface. It's exceptionally flexible with the ability to be surgically precise for mastering duties or to smooth and sculpt everyday audio production. XEQ may well provide all the different EQ options you'll ever need. XEQ features an input and output section with peak and RMS metering and gain control, an in-out button for zero latency bypassing. A total of 10 bands are provided split into dedicated high-pass and low-pass filters, low-frequency and high-frequency shelves, and six bell bands. In addition to this, various filter types are provided independently for each of the 10 bands. The high-pass and low-pass filters have five different topologies available. The six bell bands provide a total of nine different characteristic shapes. The low frequency and high frequency shelving filters offer a variable cue. Together, these cover the vast majority of EQ styles currently popular amongst professional users, including some legacy styles which are renowned for their artistic capability and some unique designs only possible in the digital domain. The parallel button recreates the passive parallel equalizer used in old or newly recreated graphic EQs built with inductors and capacitors. Parallel EQ exhibits quite different sonic properties to familiar serial parametric EQ. A passive EQ does not have any gain elements, but can still have controls to seemingly boost frequencies as well as cut them. What actually happens is the entire signal is cut by an amount, but the frequencies which are apparently boosted are simply not cut as much. Therefore the unit must attenuate either the input, the output, or both to allow enough headroom. We usually use serial EQs where each filter band is placed after the previous one in a long chain. This means that often the bands bleed into each other, making an EQ curve that is a combination of the bands interacting. Older classic parallel EQs split the signal into different bands and then apply each filter separately before recombining the signal. This means you can get much tighter curves where there's no interaction between the EQ bands. You might use serial EQs for overall sound shaping and parallel EQs to do the surgery work on specific frequencies. A real-time FFT analyzer reports the amplitude of all the frequencies within the 20 Hz to 20 kHz range. The analyzer is placed post-EQ so you can see what effect the processing has on the frequency spectrum. The spectrum analyzer makes it easy to spot an offending frequency that needs attenuate, or a range of frequencies that require a boost. The analyzer graphic can be turned on and off with the Analyze button. The AB button allows you to quickly switch between two EQ setups. I'm going to use XEQ to process this layered synth part. Synths can have a wide frequency range, sometimes producing frequencies extending below 20 Hz. This can cause problems for low frequency drivers and the headroom of your mixes. I'll use the high pass filter to roll off any frequencies I feel unnecessary for the sound I want. As you can see, I have five filter options to choose from. I've decided to turn my analyzer on so I can see the frequency content of my synth sound. And it will also show me the frequency content post EQ. I'm going to add some low end and high frequency detail using the high and low shelf curves.
Adjusting the Q value allows you to change the character of the shelf curves. Setting a more aggressive higher Q value also applies a dip in the frequencies after your fundamental low boost, or a dip in the frequencies before your fundamental high frequency boost. The real power of XEQ is being able to select different types of EQ curve, depending on what you need to do. XEQ features symmetrical and asymmetrical EQ curves. We understand a normal EQ curve is symmetrical, meaning that boosts and cuts both follow the same curves above and below the zero decibel mark. Whereas an asymmetrical curve has a normal curve when boosting and a much narrower curve when cutting, or vice versa. An asymmetrical curve is useful when you want to apply broad boost to the low end of a vocal but notch out the very narrow frequency range because of buzz or breadth, or if you want to cut the broad low frequency ranges and boost a narrow high frequency to make the de-essing easier. Quite often we find ourselves needing two different EQ plugins in series to achieve this, but using XEQ is simple to set up. You can also choose between proportional Q and constant Q curves. Proportional curves are useful for applying shallow gain changes to wide frequency bands. Great for overall shaping of guitar or synth sounds, a trick the SSL G-Series EQ is known for. Constant Q curves mean you get narrow frequency ranges, even at low boost or cut. This is useful for bringing out specific frequencies on a snare drum or the pick sound on a bass, a trick that the SSL E-Series EQ does well. Now pay attention to the EQ graph and listen to the way the sound changes when I change between proportional, constant, symmetric, and the asymmetric options you have in XEQ. As I stepped through the available options, you should have noticed how the band I adjusted reacted differently with each option. Some options may vary in Q strength while boosting or cutting, and some have quite a wide or narrow Q value. This makes the EQ very flexible by allowing you to achieve a wide range of EQ results. EQing can also be achieved by moving the handles of the EQ graph. This is handy for creative filter sweeps, often used in sound design and dance music. This is the EQ setting I feel worked best for my goal with the synth sound.
When I engage the parallel mode, notice how the sound and EQ graph change with the same preferred setting.